Hello, I'm Seok Kyung Sung, PhD candidate at the University of Michigan. What I'm going to talk about today is a new way to access hidden low dimensional ground state that is unique from conventional 2D fabrications. On the right is schematic diagram of tantalum disulfide polytype heterostructures. Tantalum disulfide, or TAS2, is a layered quasi 2D material that comes in two different polytypes, octahedral or prismatic. Here, you can see the monolayers of octahedral polytype sandwiched between prismatic layers. In this talk, we will show that this encapsulation stabilizes a latent quantum state at room temperature that is normally only stable at lower temperatures. Tantalum surface selenide is a charge ordered Vandervoort system with a rich phase diagram and extremely flexible tunability. 1T TASH2 exhibits metal to insulator transition, mod insulator, and 2H TASH2 shows superconductivity at low temperature. These exotic phenomena are associated with charge density waves, or CDWs, and periodic lattice distortions, or PLDs. We can further control their physical properties with pressure and electric field. But note that these measurements are bulk measurements. We actually have another tunability, thickness. What we are looking at here is how CDW states changes with thickness. We see, for example, CCDW gives way to NC phase as we decrease the thickness. If we go to 2D limit, you and others have reported that CDWs disappear entirely. And therefore, thickness provides a new tunability. And for this talk, we show a new way to restore charge order in this 2D regime. We'll show that we can re-engineer 2D regime by synthesizing a novel, clean polytype heterostructure with minimal impurities and defects. So to back up a little, as I said, tasks to host CDWs and PLDs that are responsible for exotic properties. So what are they? Here, I'm showing a perfect lattice of positively charged ions. If the crystal has CDWs in it, there is periodic fluctuation of charge density. Now, you can imagine that the lattice will displace along the charge gradient. Because charge density is periodic, so will be the displacement. This is PLD. Note that the displacement is exaggerated in this animation, and typically the displacements are smaller than 0.1 angstrom. Luckily for us, diffraction is very good at detecting PLDs. Here is a diffraction pattern of 1T TAS2 at room temperature. Bright peaks are normal bright peaks, and all decorative peaks nearby are superlattice peaks due to PLDs. Analytically, the diffraction pattern of PLDs results in first-order superlattice peaks, I1, that are proportional to Bessel function J1 of k.a, where k is the position of superlattice peaks, and a is PLD displacement vector. This means that the superlattice peaks get more prominent at high k, and you can tell whether PLDs are longitudinal or transverse. Another important point is that, despite lattice is distorted, bright peak positions are unaffected by PLDs. The intensities just get redistributed as the superlattice peaks. TAS2 features many different CDW phases. For this talk, I would like you to focus on commensurate and nearly commensurate phase of octahedrally coordinated TAS2. In commensurate phase, the CDWs are locked into the crystal. In nearly commensurate, long-range order is disrupted by discommensuration. There are other phases at extreme low temperatures and high temperatures. If you're interested in what happens in high temperature, check out my other talk. The focus of this talk is what happens at room temperature. Once again, the octahedral task 2 is in disordered nearly commensurate phase, and prismatic phase is a normal metal. Okay, here we see room temperature diffraction pattern of 1T task 2. What I'm going to show is a new way to thermally access a new phase. First, we heat to about 600 Kelvin and stay about 5 to 10 minutes, then cool back down to room temperature. Here's the diffraction pattern of the new phase. First, you can see there are a lot more peaks. Comparing to the original nearly commensurate state, you can see the peaks are coming in pairs and they are mirror images of each other. In real space, this corresponds to two mirror symmetric degenerate CDWs 
which we name alpha and beta. Normally, autoplane coupling breaks this degeneracy. But something else also happens. The position of the peaks also change. They now line up exactly at commensurate CDW positions, which should be only stable at low temperature. Because they are twinning and because they are commensurate with the lattice, we name it the commensurate twin phase. So we restore the twin degeneracy and low temperature phase is stabilized at room temperature. To investigate the nature of twinning, we employed 4D stem, where a full diffraction pattern is recorded at each scan position. We converged our beam to about 4.6 nanometer, which covers several super lattice unicells. Here, I'm showing you the position average nanobeam diffraction pattern from the entire 870 nanometer field of view. From this 4D stem data, we formed a virtual dark field image just from a, the alpha peaks and also just from the beta peaks. You can see that both dark field images span the entire field of view. From this, we confidently conclude that the twinning is occurring out of plane. So how is out of plane twin stabilized? And how is this low temperature phase stabilized? The answer here is polytype heterostructure. On the left, we see a 1T sample where every layer is in octahedral coordination. Here, CDWs form as bulk with outer plane interaction that drives single twinned NC phase at room temperature. By forming a polytype heterostructure, we can endotaxially encapsulate monolayers of TAS2 in between metallic prismatic layers. The metallic layers screen outer plane interaction to stabilize twin. And they shield external disorders to stabilize low temperature commensurate phase at room temperature. The low temperature commensurate phase is stabilized not only structurally, but also electronically and optically. On the top right is the optical image of a device that we've made to measure in-plane resistivity. In pristine 1T task 2, we see two transitions associated with commensurate to nearly commensurate and nearly commensurate to incommensurate CDW transitions. When we thermally treat the sample, we see a dramatic change in the electronic property. We see overall downward slope due to the mostly metallic layers, but we see a single jump in resistivity which indicates direct incommensurate to twin commensurate transition without nearly commensurate phase. Optically, we used second harmonic generation which is sensitive to changes in symmetry. In pristine sample, we see a broken symmetry as you expect from single twin CDW. After the thermal treatment, we can see the mirror symmetry is recovered. These results, in combination of diffraction and 4D stem, clearly shows that we have stabilized commensurate twin CDWs at room temperatures. In summary, we've synthesized polytype heterostructure that stabilizes twin commensurate CDWs. We employed 4D stem to reveal that the twinning is occurring out of plane. Metallic prismatic layers screen out of plane interaction and disorder to stabilize twin commensurate CDW at room temperature. We would like to thank WMCAC Foundation and Paradigm for support, and thank you for watching.